So today I'm going to now show you how to implement granted authorities in Spring Boot and actually see how we can map what we have in our database, the roles and privileges in our database. We are going to map it to granted authorities in Spring Boot and then use it in our security configuration. So let me show you how it works. So right now we have this application and you can see I have view products and view order. Of course, you can set any permission. Now, if I go to the products page, for instance, you see that I have access to these products. If I go to the settings and I'm going to remove access to view product from myself, so I'm going to remove or unassign myself this role or this privilege, and I'm going to save the privileges. Now I'm going to try to assess the same page view products and I don't have access to view, right? It doesn't display anything. And now if I go to order management, I have the orders, access to the orders. Now let me go to the order pay, uh, to the assigned privilege page and I unassign myself access to the order uh, orders, the view order, uh, which is this one and I save. So if I go back to the orders page, you'll see that I no longer have access. Later on, we are going to implement page to display the actual error message that you don't have access to view the order or the products or any other thing. Now let's try maybe another method. Let's say you have access to view the page, but you cannot edit. So let's say we go to my profile again. I assign myself, assign myself, view product, view order, save privilege. And if I go back, I could see the the product and I have access. Now I'm going to um, I'm going to try to edit. So if I edit now, I can edit and I save. Everything is working perfectly well. Okay, so I think maybe there is some. Let's see. Um, okay, so I can't save because I don't have access to update products, right? So let me give myself access to update product. So I'm going to turn access to update product on and I'm going to save it as well. So if I go back to the inventory to product and I try to update this time, it should be, I should be able to update as you can see. So this is how it works. So you have access to different HTTP methods, get, put, post and delete. You can assign uh, access to those. You map what you have in your database, the role and privileges you defined, you map it to granted authorities and then use it in your configuration. And let me just show you how it is because we are actually going to implement it. So let me show you how this implementation looks like. So at the end of the day, you, you'll be doing something like this, but we are going to take it step by step. So you can see the different methods. So even if you have access to view, you might not have access to posts. So your assets have to be granted in a granular level. So let's go ahead to start from the scratch. So this is the application. This is where we stopped. Uh, this is the one that doesn't have anything implemented. So we are going to be working on this API because this one is the, just the API for now. After we finish this course, today's lesson, we are now going to move straight to working on the React UI. So let's go ahead to get started. So the first thing you want to do is what I described. You want to map the authorities, sorry, you want to map the privileges you have in your database to granted authorities. Granted authorities they are, is simply a term uh, Spring Boot uses to describe permissions granted to a user. It's the same as privileges, but in Spring Boot, the term or the concept is called granted authority. So what we are going to do is we are going to go to the user principle and we are going to, instead of returning in the user principle, we have where we return granted authority right here. I'm going to actually say before I continue this um, lesson, I want to kind of show some appreciation to some of my subscribers. I have one person called Olarewaju Saka, a very good subscriber. He gives me a lot of motivation every time. We also have Banjoko Abiodo, thank you very much. Prashant Nergun, thank you very much for being there. There's somebody else called Good Causes Available, that is his name. That is the title of this person. Uh, thank you for being there. 
Now some have asked me to do WebSocket for real-time live notification alerts. I think that came from Olarawaju or maybe um, Abiodo. So real-time notification for WebSocket for real-time notification alert. I'm working on that behind the scene. It will be ready in the coming uh, weeks or months. Then we also have Spring Boot Stripe Payment Gateway Integration. I'm working on that. Take note. So I'm not forgetting. But Lara Waju Saka, you mentioned multi-tenancy, implementing multi-tenancy using Spring Framework. I'm also working on that behind the scenes. So thank you all my subscribers out there. And one thing I also have done, I want to let you know, is that I've implemented the membership. So membership means that you can actually become a member and then I can actually do a one-on-one -on -one with you, actually implement any feature uh, that you mentioned, I can prioritize that as well. So you can see a join button behind, below this video. You can click on that to join uh, my channel so that we can actually work together on projects. If you want to support in different way, also click on the thanks button. Uh, you see a thanks button there, click on it. You can give a support. And if you've not subscribed, please hit on that subscribe, subscribe button to subscribe to my channel. Okay, let's go ahead to get started. So right here, instead of returning single thing granted authority user, we are going to return the actual privileges, right? So what we are going to do, we are going to get the privileges which will come from... So actually, what contains the user's permissions, what contains the user permissions is the user privilege assignments service, right? That is what contains the privileges assigned to a user. So I'm going to wire that in here. So I'm going to say privilege. I think if we call it user privilege assignment, user privilege assignments service, which is this assignment service, let's say private final, Okay, it's going to ask us to do a constructor injection. We are going to do that. And I'm going to actually put final on this as well so that we can also do a constructor injection. So add, a, add constructor parameter. So we added the constructor parameter. In, in this place, we are going to now return. First, let's get all the privileges assigned to this user. So I'm going to say list of privilege privilege list, let's just leave it as privilege list is equal to user privilege assignment, actually assignment service dot get user privileges. And I'm going to say user dot get ID. So this is going to give us all the user privileges. And now we are going to stream this privilege this privileges and use it to create granted authorities. So I'm going to now say return privilege list dot stream dot map and for each of them so i'm going to say privilege i'm going to create granted authority for each of them so i'm going to create new simple granted authority and simple granted authority takes a string which will be getting it from privilege dot get description collectors collectors dot to list and this is exactly what we need so here now we have returned the list of the actual privileges assigned to the user. But now we have a number of errors. So we have the user principal now is a constructor that now takes two parameters, right? So it takes two parameters and this constructor is used somewhere in the user details service, which is right here. You can see now we have one uh, parameter here, but we actually need two. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create uh, actually wire in the same service as the second parameter. So private final user privilege, privilege assignment service, assignment service, that is final. And we are going to do a constructor injection like before. Okay, great. Okay, so this is exactly the changes you need to make. And here we now return also the second parameter. So the first parameter is the, oh, the second, the first parameter is the assignment service and the second parameter is the user, okay? So at this point we have the 
the granted authority is being returned from the privileges we defined in our database. So the next thing you want to do now, let's just make sure everything is fine. So this is the first step. The next thing you want to do is to go to your security config and now set up the security configuration for different routes. So let's do for products and I'm going to allow you to continue for every other endpoint out there in this application. So we are going to go to security config and just somewhere here before any request that authenticated, we are going to do, let me just give a space dot request matches and we are going to do products right products slash okay product that the first one and the second one is going to be products product slash hash hash so this is going to be for like product slash id product slash id slash delete or, or get product by id or maybe update product for this one is for getting all the product and also posting products before then we are going to say hey uh, we are going to add the methods http method dot get and i'm going to just put a comma so request matcher for this method for this we are going to say it must have an authority it must have the authority view 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 product okay okay so Unfortunately, you have to set up all these for all those privileges. You have to set it up like this. So there are no actually easy way to do it. So, but once you set it up, you make sure that these, these are privileges you define for your application. You don't continue to change them. Okay, so let's copy and, copy and paste this for every other method, every other HTTP method. So we have get, post, and we have put and delete and get post put and delete so this is going to be post is going to be create product right create put is going to be update product and delete is going to be delete product take note that we don't have any of this yet created i'm not sure we have all of this but once you have it here you can now create them or insert them into your database I'm going to go ahead to test this application. So let's run it just to make sure. Let me take out this. So let's run it so that we make sure we don't miss out anything. And maybe we can insert one or two products and then we use this configuration to test the security privileges, all right? So let's go back to our favorite Swagger UI and I'm going to refresh. Yes, it's me. <laughs> because we have one user so we actually need to be authenticated and I have been authenticated by that user so if I go to products and I try it out and I execute and you see that I don't have anything it's forbidden right it's forbidden now this is forbidden yes it's correct because we don't have permission to view that product so what we are going to do i'm going to assign myself the privilege view products so first we are going to create the privilege view product and i'm going to assign it to myself and we will be able to assess this endpoint products so let's go to our roles uh, let me normally i like using the browser it's kind of easier to see things clearly so let me go to localhost port 8080 and let's see what API privileges. Actually, I want to see roles first. And we have the role of sales manager. So I'm going to create a second role called, okay, but let's leave this role. Let's leave sales manager there. Let's, oh, we even have view products. Perfect, perfect. So I'm going to assign myself view products role, right? Let's just go check. Oh, we call this view products, products. Okay. So let's update the, this to view product. So actually we, I have that role just that it is view products instead of view product. So we are going to edit the role one or privilege one. So let's do a put first let's do a get on privilege one so let's get privilege 
one. Is it privilege one? Yes, privilege one. That's view products. So let's go to privilege one. Try it out. And this is privilege one. And I execute. And we have privilege one right here. So let's edit it so that it's going to be view products instead of view products. So let's go to puts and then put. I'm going to click on try it and I'm going to just paste this and I'm going to change it to view products, right? And I'm going to remove the ID because in a put request, you don't send the ID. So I'm going to execute this. ID is not provided. It's going to be one and execute. Okay, so the response is 200, okay, and it's view product. Now I have access to the products now. So it's no longer going to be forbidden. <laughs> let's go try. I don't know, but let's see how it works. So if I go to products and I try to do execute. So before now we have it to be forbidden. So I'm going to execute now. You know, forbidden. So let's see. Oh, so I don't have any privilege. So yeah, that is the point. So let me assign myself privilege one. That is view product. So I'll be able to view product. I'm going to assignments. Let me look for assignments. Assignments. User privilege assignment. So I'm going to assign myself privilege one, right? So it's going to be a post user privilege assignments. Uh, let's get it right. User privilege assignments. So user privilege assignment, get everything. Okay, so this is where we are, where we should be. So we are going to assign, I'm going to assign myself that privilege and let me get the privilege first. So the privilege is privilege one, which is view products, which is this one. Actually privilege three, privilege three, right? So, so to assign myself a privilege, I'm going to go to user user id privileges right so we are going to post privileges here we are going to try it out and we are going to put the user id to be one and the privileges the privileges is going to be what i have copied on my clipboard so i'm going to paste it right here so in this case i'm assigning myself just one privilege and that is view product and I'm user one, so I'm going to execute. And it came out, it came out successful. So you have, we have 201 uh, pr privilege was saved successfully. So if I go back to my uh, my profile, so it's going to be users, uh, user slash one, slash privileges, we are going to see one privilege assigned to me. And of course, if I go to just my profile, you see my profile with just one privilege, and that is privilege three which is view products right so now let's go to try to assess the products uh, list to see if we can have access to the product list so let's check for products product controller okay right here so let's go ahead to execute now i have the privilege let's now go ahead to execute okay so you can see that it returned okay and it returns off Okay, yeah, it returned an empty because for now we don't have any product. So it returned empty. I'm going to actually uh, stop here because now I think you have a grip on how it works. I'm going to also continue in the next part. We are going to work on JWT, um, that is JSON Web Token. I think we're also going to work on deploying to AWS. I wrote them here. We are going to work on deploying to AWS. We are going to work on deploying to Azure. And we have a few other things we may be working on, like the refresh token. We also have maybe authentication using other identity providers like Google or, or Facebook. And this is called single sign-on using OAuth 2.0. And any other thing you remember about how we can improve the API, please let me know because I'm going to be switching to working on the UI and then we are going to be improving our API as we go. Thank you very much for viewing. Remember to subscribe to my channel if you've not subscribed. Also say thanks, join my channel if you want to support. If you want us to work together as a community, we can work on this open source project. And so we see in the next part.